Okay, let's talk about updates in androgenic alopecia. Um, there's not a lot of new uh, information about, about causes. We know it is genetically uh, predestined. We do know hormones play a role. It's interesting. We're seeing, we're doing more and more biopsies because we're seeing more scarring alopecias, and we'll talk about that later. And as a result of seeing more and more biopsies being done, we're seeing um, more and more microinflammation uh, and, and some fibrosis, which is scarring, noted even on the androgenic alopecia patients. It's mild, but again, some studies up to 70% of patients who have biopsies that do have primarily androgenic alopecia will have some degree of inflammation. And I think it speaks for what our environment and our diet uh, does to our bodies in general uh, and the hair in particular. Um, there's a moderate amount of evidence to suggest that decreased circulation uh, and vasoconstriction or tightening of the blood vessels also may play a role. Um, some of the medications treat that, particularly minoxidil and, um, and laser therapy um, for androgenic alopecia also at, do uh, help with the decreased circulation that can, that can take place with androgenic alopecia. Nutritional deficiencies. Again, I go into specifics, but these particular ones, vitamin D, zinc, the B vitamins, and iron are particularly important for good hair health. Here at Meditress, we did our own study. Uh, we found people who um, took just supplements for six months and have improvement in their hair growth. And again, I think it speaks again, quality of the diet that many of us have. 